Hello AACPS staff and welcome to a short tutorial about the lesson settings options in Nearpod. To access your lesson settings you're going to want to click on your profile icon in the far upper right hand corner and choose lesson settings here in the pop-out. This gives you the ability to customize the experience that you and your students have when using Nearpod. The option at the very top here is to auto fill student names. If you have ever been frustrated by students putting in a name of their choosing that is either not their real name or possibly even an inappropriate name, turning on autofill student names will prevent this. It requires students to sign in with their AACPS Google account, ensuring that you know who everyone participating in your lesson is. This is one of the settings that we highly recommend everyone turn on as it is off by default. Our next option here is to enable student notes. In some of the previous videos that you have found in the Nearpod course, we have talked about how students have the ability to take notes throughout your Nearpod lesson. They can only do this if you turn this setting on, so this would be another setting that we highly recommend everyone turn on. Moving down to our accessibility settings, we have the ability to enable Immersive Reader. This is another one that we recommend because it is off by default, but in order to ensure that students have access to all of those tools, we recommend everyone turn this on so that the students can utilize the Immersive Reader tools as needed. Now we come down to two settings that you have only when running a live participation lesson. These two are both on by default. The first is the ability when the teacher is running an activity to default to the student view. That means if you decide that you want to pull the Nearpod lesson up on your smart board, for example, to show the students how to engage in the activity, they will see the student view, not the teacher's view of the activity. If you are not planning to show this on the smart board and you would prefer to stay in the teacher's view when you are in a live participation, you can turn this off. The next is allowing the students to edit and resubmit answers after they have engaged in an activity. Again, on by default. Moving down, we come to a section of uh, settings that you'll have only when running student-paced lessons. All three of these are off by default. First, we have for the interactive videos, if you want to enforce uh, students to answer all questions without being able to skip them, you are going to want to turn uh, this one on here to require students to respond and prevent skipping questions in the video. Next, we have the ability to share quiz and multiple choice question results. This allows students to see the results from a quiz or multiple choice question uh, in any interactive video and even change their answers. And finally, we have the ability to enable the collaborate board in student paced settings. If you don't turn this one on, students will not be able to actually engage in a collaborate board when you are running a student paced lesson. So if you plan to use collaborate and you'll be using student paced, this is another one that you'll want to turn on. Once you have your settings customized and set up the way that you would like, there is no save button or anything that you have to do to turn those on. You are simply ready to click Nearpod here in the upper left hand corner to be taken back to your dashboard. One final note on these lesson settings, please notice it says changes to any settings will only apply to new lesson codes. So if you actively have self-paced lessons running and you change these settings, you will want to stop those lessons and restart them and get a new code to have these settings apply. I hope this short tutorial has helped you see some of the lesson settings and understand the ones that we recommend that you turn on for any lessons you deliver to your students.